Hello everyone, I am Dr. Omkar Sangeeta Dilipra Sunone, a mentor in Team AFMG and today we are elated and glad to have with us Dr. Pomi Patel who has recently cleared her foreign medical graduate examination in the Jan 2023 session. So first of all, we would like to wholeheartedly congratulate Dr. Pomi on her youth success and would like to welcome on her board for answering some of our queries that usually FMG aspirants have when they usually begin their preparations. And as her story is also inspiring because she has got a time of less than 35 days for her preparations and uh, also suffering from some personal loss, she has made it through. So I feel she is the best one to answer all your queries to how to sustain in this period as well. So first of all, uh, we would like to welcome you on board, Dr. Pomi, and uh, congratulations to you as well as your parents as well. So first of all, please introduce yourself. Thank you so much, sir, for congratulating me. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, thanks to my parents and the second thanks should be goes to you, the AFMG team, because uh, as you mentioned that I was having a very less time, maybe the less than 35 days only. And also, as you mentioned that I was suffering from a personal loss. Uh, so it was like uh, no, uh, impossible, not possible thing for me. And uh, your team had made me succeed, to be honest, because uh, when I went to your uh, your YouTube channel, I get to know that there were some rapid revisions videos, right. which were very concrete and concise. And that helped me a lot because uh, that was having a to the point questions and answers in that. And many direct questions were also uh, there in the exam, which were had been cleared from that. So thanks for that. Thank you so oh, much. So we would like to ask you, when did you graduate and from which university? Uh, so I graduated from the Georgia, uh, which was the Grigor Robakidze University. And I graduated recently at the uh, month of uh, October uh, 2022. Oh, great. So as you said, you have graduated in October. Then after coming back to India, as you're having a very less, less span of time. So what was your initial strategy when you began your preparations? Like uh, there would be a lot of suggestions coming all the way, like join a coaching or a lot of things like maybe join take some online platforms. So what was that? Uh, what was the strategy that had actually played a role in your success? So uh, if I tell you about this strategy first of all it was not uh, in my mind to give an fmg exam because i was personally uh, i was uh, like to be go in some another uh, country for that so i was not preparing for fmg but after some of my near uh, nearest and dearest my father who had some issues so i decided to come to india and uh, do the fmg first and to stay with him so I was having a, a very less time, like in November, just I started with that. So first of all, what I went through, uh, you were having some videos on the YouTube with the PYQ recalls. Right. So I went through those PYQ recalls and then 50% of my course, you will not believe I just had from that because you were uh, giving the to the point answers to each of that. Also, you were explaining uh, the correct option as well as why not to choose the wrong one. So that right. helped me to cover the 50% of my syllabus. After that, I saw another videos of you, yours, which were rapid revision. And th that was only with one and a half uh, hours or two hours videos. And that was very concise and concrete, which had finished my timeline up to like 70% of course. So that helped me. Okay, great. So I hope, like, I think that's uh, a wonderful one because uh, uh, we think in less span of time, it's not possible. But uh, as we know, you have made it possible as well. Now, I would like to ask you, uh, when you are planning it out or when you were preparing, how much part of the time you're watching videos or you are reading your notes and how much part of the day you were actually solving MCQs? So this was, uh, this is like really a good question. Uh, because, uh, sir, to be honest, the video time and my uh, PYQ recalls video time were less than the revision time. Because uh, always I heard from everyone that come padho, lekin bar bar padho. Right. Just revise the same thing which you had studied today. And my uh, one of the my uh, habit was to write whatever you were telling in the YouTube, you and the pediatric teacher, Dr. Bharti. So whatever I was learning, I was writing that, pasting on my wall. And I was revising it as much time I can 
like while eating like uh, and also while uh, sleeping i was uh, doing like today if i completed the medicine then medicine questions i do at the time of bed time and whenever i woke up in the next morning i do the mcqs after whole day i will do the review uh, the uh, youtube videos part and i will do the revision part in the evening and also in the next day same revision i do and the another stuff i practice as well but the revision was my key things to be done right i also think like revisions play a very vital role in your success and yes. that uh, is like in front of you as well guys so please remember whenever you are preparing i feel that's most important that these people revise multiple times a lot of people actually in the first revision itself they take almost uh, like uh, four days or five days for one subject i feel you have mentioned an important point that that's not required you need to increase the number of the revisions definitely quality matters but in uh, terms of revision the quantity also matters as well so now i would like to ask you uh, a lot of people might feel how is it possible in 35 days so i would like to ask you what was your preparation uh, during your ug days like uh, were your concepts clear or were you reading any textbooks or were you following something so yeah okay so so uh, i was when i was in a med school uh, like i was more than an average student my percentage was like in between 89 to 95 every time uh so what i was going like my all the friends whenever we are first year they are just uh, keep telling of fmg we have to crack fmg we are learning about fmg i never had uh, such ideas uh, what is fmg and what we have to do just i whatever the textbooks were there whatever the teacher was mentioning i just learn that much also more than that but i uh, just i never have the rectification or i just do with the basic concepts so uh, every time i go through the uh, uh, the whatever stuff was there i go through that very clearly and concisely every time i never focused on the fmg or any other competitive exam but whatever do, those had studied me today i have to finish that and i have to keep that in the mind and i have to keep them revise every year uh, no matter i had studied man at in the first year but uh, till the fifth year i was revising that so that helped me right indeed it would help so i feel that's most important also a lot of people who are pursuing their uh, undergraduation right now so they should keep this in mind like uh, it's always better to start early there's no loss in that and definitely at least whatever you study every day that's important that you keep a note of it you revise it as well from the first year till the last year of your graduation and uh, that definitely plays an important role a lot of people go there enjoy and then come back directly so at least the bare minimum they can do whatever they are appearing for the examinations over there they can study for that at least right so that's important now i would like to ask you uh, how many mcqs you were practicing daily first thing and second uh, how many gts you, did you appear for yeah oh uh, i was having 120 to 140 50 uh, mcqs daily uh, that mcqs can cover some of the mock tests some of the pyq recalls both of them and some which uh, were there on the youtube and on the google as well so uh, a completely 140 questions i was uh, having every day if i i'm also not if uh, any days there where i had didn't study for then also i was doing my mcqs daily i was not lefting it out uh, so that much mcq i was doing and grand test about uh, i i did gave only one grand test but uh, the mock test which were i was giving and in the mock test i was always getting uh, firstly i was getting 135 in the mock test and at the end 142 145 sometime 120 also i was getting in the mock test okay so that's most important i feel you should not get disheartened uh, when you score less in the gds or the mocks but it's more important to analyze and learn from those mistakes so that you can avoid those in the actual examination so that's a very important take away from your gt experiences now i would like to ask you uh, the exams postponed as well like uh, it was to be conducted on 4th of december then on 20th of january definitely i feel that would have been played uh, as a, like a very important role in your preparations uh, it would be a boon for you but how did you manage to pace up with that what uh, did your strategy completely changed or what did you do in those extra 45 days that you got good question sir uh, obviously my strategy had been changed because first of all uh, in the very few time my strategy was only to uh, do the pyqs and that enough but 
after when i get some more time it was completely a boom for me because uh, at that time at that boom period uh, i had this revision uh, part uh, the rapid revisions which you were having and i was uh, going through it once and i was revising it for three times uh, so that helped me so that it had increased my score to 30% right so definitely uh, for some people when they got off track some of those uh, who were struggling with time they definitely uh, like got a huge advantage of the postponement as well so it's always i feel it always depends how you take uh, the postponement or the preponement of the examinations whatever it is so you need to have that positive attitude towards the examination and you need to just uh, manage your strategy accordingly that's important now i would like to ask you <coughs> sorry i would like to ask you uh, as important thing that you have mentioned you were writing each and everything that used to be discussed in the videos and then you were revising it almost two or three times right almost four to five times for some times now uh, like uh, for example if a person is not able to revise the content same day like if he misses out then what should be done like what should be his strategy uh if uh, anyone have a time to read at that particular day then it's very good because it was it's recently in your mind and if you are writing at that particular time it will be like it will cover 90% of that what you had recorded mm. if you are uh, like uh, living one day and then you are doing 70% of the stuff you get to know and those 20 30% will be uh, rested so you have to try that but if if it is not even uh, done then uh, you should not uh, like you should not have your mind uh, small or you should not be disheartened at that time what you have to do whatever left that's left whatever you are having right now in the mind even after 3 days just write it or recall it from somewhere or just thinking think about it and uh, in the next day after that also recall it once more time so whatever 50% right. or 70% you are having still it's not bad right now my next question would be uh, like the undue stress or the anxiety during the examination that's a very important and rather a very difficult thing to handle because uh, usually that anxiety overpowers in on the exam day and definitely that takes away everything so how did you manage to maintain uh, like calm and uh, be relaxed at that point of time during the exam uh first of all i'll tell about my personal and then i'll tell about what rest uh, what the rest people should think so in my personal uh, to be honest on the 14th of jan my, i lost my father so i i i had not uh, like after that i was not in my mind so that i can give my exam but still my mother and my brother both uh, had insisted me and also my father's big dream was to become a good surf doctor so i had kept that in my mind also when i saw your video i kept recalling all this thing all that thing that i had prepared it nicely why should i waste that uh, whatever i knowledge i gained so that uh, then i decided to give the exam and at that time i was very smooth i was not at all confident i was not at all under confident i was like whatever will happen will happen for a reason so in the in the other way i was thinking that if i will i am passing then i have to also give a good uh, like uh, i will read more even after that even i had passed because i know that i had cracked 157 remaining marks are left so i have to complete it as well no matter everyone are watching or not but i have to have some knowledge even after that so that i can save life of person Uh, so i decided that if, whether i am going to pass i will read and whether if i am not going to pass i will think like that that my knowledge is uh, really less right now i have to increase my knowledge so that before i was serving for the one patient now i will serve for the more hundred pa patients in a sure. good and i will have their life to be like boon so that what i was having in my mind and uh, one thing everyone have to have that uh, never be over confident that i had revised many time i had uh, preparation from one year don't be over confident because sometime your over confident brings you less marks and don't be even under confident as well because you are have you are inspiration of yourself you are having motivation within yourself you can do if you had 
thought about that i can do so uh, you everything every answer is there in the question itself what you have to do is you have to believe in yourself and in your choice so right. don't be under uh, rated as well for that right so first of all we are very sorry to hear about your loss and uh, i definitely know that he would be very proud of you he would be watching you from heaven above and uh, i can totally understand and totally relate to it because i also suffered from the similar kind of situation before my examinations so i know, i know and I understand it thoroughly so definitely that the thing that you mentioned i feel this story of yours will definitely inspire a lot of people who usually uh, just lose all the hopes they lose the faith in their in themselves that uh, i will not be able to do this and i will not be able to do that so a lot of excuses they bring to the table but definitely a story uh, just like yours will definitely inspire a lot and lot of people out there who are uh, appearing for the upcoming neat or the fmg examination so uh important is apart from this you mentioned that uh, the most important thing you should not be over confident or you should not be under confident okay being confident is fine but uh, or the other things definitely they can, they might take you down and that's most important now uh coming to the conclusion of the interview i would like to ask what is the most important advice that you would like to give to all the upcoming fmg aspirants and if any mistakes that you did what were uh, what you would like to tell them like they should avoid please go ahead of course first of all uh, what personal thought i i am having for that is my quote of my father my father always says that hard work always pays you off so i was telling my father that i i am not getting time it's 2 3 months only and i didn't prepare for that my father always says that from the very first year you were having a good score you were good student at that time so that hard work will pay you off this time so hard work always pays and uh, some points you have to be in your mind like uh, whenever i was in my med school in the first year second year no matter the third year even at the time of corona i was waking up at, at the 5 o'clock daily sometime 5:30 but not beyond 5:30 and what the first thing i was obsessed with was before bathing before brushing before eating food i am always having my book with me for half an hour i am going through my uh, whatever course at that time was there like uh, any anat biochem physio or psychiatry any subject for half an hour one hour and then only i was doing my daily activity after that even when i was sleeping i was uh, recalling everything what what i did in the day whole day and i was re- keep revising it from the very first year of my uh, med school also discipline as i said that if you what if do everything in your life enjoy everything but one discipline is very important if you have to uh, read one page every day you have to read if you have to wake up early in the morning at 5 o'clock you have to wake up no matter what clock you were sleeping uh, last night and uh, self belief is the one of the most important key to be honest i was not a self belief person before my father was there because my father and mother was having more belief than what i was having in my own self but after uh, his uh, after my that lost i get to know that my self belief is really working sure. and uh, patience is very important in your life as well uh for those who also giving their exam next time i i sh- i don't want to tell the fail word for them because fail never exist until and unless it's it's not in your mind right if in your mind the fail word is there it will be if if in your mind fail word is not there it do not exist so you have to give your second try no matter if it's 140 my five marks or 120 marks this time you have to read more about that and just think positive that more knowledge i will gain more future uh, i am having and more person i can serve and more uh, life i can save so True. that is one also one song is there which i was used to uh, uh, like uh, listen for 5 to 10 times in the day and that was jaane bachayenge at the time of corona so that had also inspired me my father inspired me my whole house inspired me right 
So I feel that's most important to have a constant support uh, from your families, from your loved ones as well. And uh, the most important, even if uh, the whole world is believing you or even if they are uh, totally against you, uh, if you have one asset that I always say in that you also revised it, that is self-belief, nothing is impossible for anyone then. So yes. I hope, thank you, uh, Dr. Pommy, and your story inspires a lot and lot of FMG aspirants and uh, they also pass with flying colors in the upcoming examinations. And uh, thank you for joining us and answering all our queries that we usually had. And once again, congratulations on your success. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, sir. You were also one of the inspiring because uh, very first time I saw your video that you had also cracked your exam very first time after a personal loss with 221 right. marks. And that has also inspired me to join your YouTube channel, AFMG. So thanks to AFMG, a big thanks. And also thanks to you and my parents, my family.